Well, I have a very good friend of mine, a man by the name of Alain Samur, and we've known each other for a few years now. We've done some real estate together, but Alain has a, uh, is a, um, he's executive director, I believe, of the CNAB, the Canadian National Institute of the Blind, and their foundation. But Alain has a story to tell us that I think you'll all find interesting. So go ahead, Al. Alain. Hi, Start. Richard. <laughs> Thank you for interviewing me. It's great to see you. Nice to see you as well. Ça va? Ça va très bien. Um, so I guess my story is that a few weeks ago, I got diagnosed with uh, the COVID virus, COVID-19 virus, and I was hospitalized for five days. Um, you know, I, it was very, very difficult. I was sick for a few days. And honestly, I think I caught the virus um, by just being out in the community, which, right. you know, says that, you know, we all need to be careful and, you know, we can't control what others do, but if people can, you know, continue washing their hands, only go out when necessary, wear gloves, wear a mask, it does help others. Um, I think I caught it going to Rexall to just buy some Advil. Yeah. Um, and there was this one woman there coughing with no mask, no gloves, so it just, you know, helps to listen to the news as, as best as we can and take the proper precautions to help others not inflict this virus. Um, it was very troublesome. It was very hard, especially when I went to the hospital. I had no clue if I was going to come out um, because like many people, I was watching the news and seeing um, the radical numbers of people getting diagnosed, people dying from COVID-19. Um, so I was, you know, scared. My fever was very high. Um, I think the scariest thing was going to the hospital. Nobody wants to, but um, when we got there, a good friend of ours, of mine, was able to drop me off at the hospital, which was a godsend because my breathing was so bad I couldn't walk. Um, so when we got to the hospital, my partner, Neil, was with me, and um, although he wanted to help, um, the intake workers wouldn't let him through so they just grabbed me and I still had a fever I passed out from the fever in the emergency room um, you know the nurses the doctors are absolutely wonderful but you know they have to go through kind of a triage of what if the worst case scenario happens and that's the yeah. first thing that kind of they tell you and you're already feeling so bad and in the back of my mind I was just thinking I didn't even have time to say bye to my partner of 12 years right so I was like you know, I wish I would have had a few seconds at least to say goodbye, but I went to uh, Mount Sinai Hospital and I'm still so thankful to the nurses and the healthcare workers. I don't know how they keep their energy and their positivity. Um, there was one nurse that after I think the second day, my fever still wasn't going down. I had oxygen. Um, I couldn't breathe on my own. And she just looked at me and she said, you know, I know you think that you're alone, but just know that we're about 17 people working to try to make you better. So you are not alone. And I have no clue how this wonderful, wonderful woman knew that I need to hear that, but she gave it to me and it was just a godsend. So I'm super thankful to them. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, you know, everything's going well. I have no symptoms. It's been about eight days. So um, I've been with, talking to public health and to my doctor and it should be out of my body. So I'm very, very thankful. Now, were your parents, your parents weren't even able to visit you? No, my parents are still in Ottawa. I mean, you know, being an only child, they freaked out and they wanted to come down to Toronto right away and they wanted to help out. But there's really nothing that you can do. That's what's so scary about COVID-19 is that, you know, I didn't know how I was going to be feeling or if I was going to be feeling better soon. If I wasn't going to be feeling better soon, I also didn't want to infect them or for them to travel during these conditions yeah. as well. I wanted them to stay home, feel better, and just relax and self-isolate. Yeah, it's, uh, I, in the early days of the HIV, HIV AIDS um, pandemic, there was a few of my friends, and when they went to hospital, it was total isolation. And mm -hmm. if you were allowed to go and visit them, you had to mask and gown and absolutely everything. And it's very hard to communicate with people and you I would I would think you'd feel so alone in that situation 
You do feel alone. Um, I was lucky, you know, a lot of people such as yourself called, texted, which is really sweet and really great. The only thing that's, that's hard is that, you know, it, it always goes through your mind. If the worst case scenario happens, you know, nobody's going to be able to be with me if, if I pass away. Yeah. And, you know, like knowing that I love real estate and decorating, I was in a beige room, which is my nightmare. So uh, <laughs> and wanting I was just like, it. please don't do this in a beige room. <laughs> it was either that or baby shit blue. One of the two. Is exactly. Just- <laughs> it was one of the two and they're both horrible. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm still recovering. It's going to take a little while, but um, every day I feel a little bit more like myself. Yeah, and once you were over the fever, it's just an issue of really building your strength back. Am I right? Yeah, well, I was on oxygen, so yeah. it was kind of weaning me off of oxygen, which took a few days um, because I had ammonia as well in my lungs, and yeah. it affected my liver as well because I wasn't eating or drinking. Um, so it was kind of, you know, a, a gradual kind of making sure that my internal organs were good, my lungs were good, but getting me off of oxygen so that the medical team could know that I could breathe on my own and take care of myself when I'm back home. And then they, they let you go home into isolation again or into, I mean, your partner could move back in and look after you or. Yeah, well, we're lucky, as you know, we're renovating a, a house in Cabbage Town. So, right. you know, we're, you know, the house is almost 4,000 square feet and now we're stuck in 700 square feet apartment. Um, but the good news about it is that there's two bedrooms on either side of the apartment, two washrooms. So it was easier for Neil and I to self-isolate in our yeah. little corners yeah. and um, be able to still prepare meals and stuff like that, but at different times so that he doesn't you know, get sick and I can get better. So yeah. it was uh, a good system, I guess. So I was thankful yeah. that we had the two bedrooms. So um, tell us a, a couple of stories about the renovation and where you are because of COVID-19. Um, so the renovation is going great. Um, we're, still, um, we're still trying to figure everything out, but COVID-19 definitely hit us. We are about at 90% um, of the renovation, which is so frustrating because you're so close. Um, but basically our contractor, who's a wonderful man, um, a lot of his crew didn't want to work during COVID, which is yeah. completely understandable. I mean, they have kids, they have families at home. Yeah. Um, they don't want to get sick. They don't want to bring something home. Um, two, two of his crew were, were happy to still work, but you know, they wanted to work on their own in the house. So it just means that the project's going to take slightly longer to complete than anticipated. But yeah. I mean, all in all, it gives us the time to kind of reflect on some of the design choices we've done. It gives me some time to get better. It gives Neil some time to um, figure out the financing for it. So <laughs> all in all, make more money. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to help out. But uh, I'm looking forward. I really miss my backyard. I mean, having a balcony is great. Yeah. But I miss my backyard and being able to just grab a beer and a blanket and sit down. Well, I think it's also very different if you're living in a house as opposed to living in a condo. Because in a condo, if you go up and down in the elevator and there's somebody else in there, I mean, there is that that possibility of getting something. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's there's people delivering food. There's people doing everything else. So, again, you can't control what other people do. You can control yeah. what you do. So yeah. living in a condo, you do take slightly more of a risk. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I mean, so many people in Toronto live in a condo, but if people take the proper precautions, you know, it's always better. Well, I know that you're getting better and I think that's wonderful. And I can tell you that you scared the shit out of us when we got the, we got the first note from uh, Neil that you were not well and you'd gone to the hospital. I can't tell you how it affected us. Um, well, thank you. You guys are super sweet. And, you know, I am getting better. I'm still sick, but I'm getting better. I feel as though my lungs went into a punching match with my body. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel better every day, like I said. And I think the important thing here is just, you know, it's hard for everybody to be self-isolated right oh, now. Yeah. But, you know, being able to rely on friends, being able to talk to them, being able to see them, um, being able to stay positive and looking forward to this ending sometime soon um, really helps the whole journey go forward. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I, I wish you all the best 
and mm -hmm. tell so, Neil I said he has to take care of you with uh, kid gloves and uh, <laughs> preferably not beige kid gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only reason I'm getting better is he's he's taking care of me very well. So yeah. I'll uh, I'll tell him that you said he had to continue or else. Yeah, tell him uh, if he wants a good uh, recipe for chicken soup just to call me. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Pleasure. Thanks, Alain. It's great to speak yeah. to you and get well. And you and I are going to see each other face to face very soon, I hope. I hope so too. Okay. Yep. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.